Welcome to the launch of Places of Hope. This is a new report published today by your local pantry, showing the impact that pantries are having all across the UK. My name is Gavin. I'm part of the central team here at your local pantry. The photo slideshow that you've just seen is hopefully giving you a bit of a glimpse into pantry life. You'll have seen some food, some well-stocked shelves, but also I hope you spotted the very many smiles, the groups, conversations, and community solidarity. I hope that you saw some hope in that slideshow. There are now 121 your local pantries across all four nations of the UK, stretching from Edinburgh to Ebbervale, from Portadown to Portsmouth. Today's new report sets out to understand the impact that pantries are having far beyond food. It looks at the impact for some individual members at the impact for the organisations that host pantries, but above all, at the impact for collective communities, for the neighbourhoods where pantries really are places of hope. We've done impact reports and research before in 2021 and 2023, but we knew that some pantries were really thriving and excelling, and this report deliberately set out to focus on what the key ingredients are for making a community food pantry thrive. I'm going to outline the, the agenda for the next hour, um, but first of all, a, a tiny bit of housekeeping. Um, if people want to introduce themselves in the chat box, that'd be brilliant. Um, find out who else is here from your community. Secondly, if you could keep yourself on mute when other people are presenting or speaking to avoid background noise, that would be great. If you're happy to have your video on, fantastic, but there's no obligation. Uh, Thirdly, there will hopefully be time towards the end for questions, or you can pop them in the chat box as we go along. Um, several of the pantry staff team are here to answer those as we go. Uh, and finally, you might just want to make sure your Zoom screen is on um, presenter view, because we'll be showing a few slides as we go along. Uh, I know there are some people here today who, who, um, who run pantries or who work with people who do. Others of you might be considering starting one and colleagues are here to hopefully give you the extra information that you might need. Others of you might just be interested in learning more and hopefully today will help and be informative. Uh, in a moment, Rachel is going to give an overview of some of the key findings from the re report. We'll also be sharing some comments from pantry members and hearing directly from one of the pantry coordinators, um, Susan from Kingston in London. We'll also hopefully be hearing from Ed from the co-op, which has been working in partnership with your local pantry for the past three years. Um, we're not going to go through the report page by page, blow by blow. Um, this, this meeting intends to give a, an overview of the key points and we'll be sending around the full report afterwards so you can read it at your own convenience. I do just want to reiterate the entire team's thanks to everybody who shared their time, their insights, their skills, their data and their coffee while we were writing this report. It's been massively appreciated. Um, at the end, the pantry staff team are going to stay on a bit longer, specifically so that if there's anybody here who's interested in starting their first pantry, um, we can have a conversation and set up a, a more detailed one-to-one -one meeting so we can take that forward. Um, but for now, thank you all very much for joining, and I'm going to hand over to Rachel. Brilliant. Thank you, Gav. Um, you're going to get a lot of Scottish accents uh, today, which um, I hope that's all right. I'll try and speak really clearly. Um, Places of Hope is the 2024 Your Local Pantry Social Impact Report. Um, and in the report, you're going to find evidence showing how pantries are making a difference um, right across the UK. I want to start with a few headline figures for you. Um, for those of you who know me, um, you know that I'm a really big fan of the Your Local Pantry a pantry portal system, which is our software that we use in pantries. Um, and every time, for those of you who don't know, every time a member visits a pantry, um, a member, a, a volunteer or a staff member records their visit um, on the system and that all comes into this big central database. And what it means is we get to see this incredible number of people whose lives are impacted um, by pantries. Um, so just to give you some of the headlines, um, firstly, we are now a network of pantries that operate in over 121 communities across the UK. And actually, since this report was finalised, we've actually had some more incredible pantries join us over the summer. So we've already passed that number. In the report, you'll see a little bit of how the network has grown over the last five years. 
And we're just really pleased to have such a wide range of enthusiastic and value-driven partners um, across all four nations. In the last 11 years um, of your local pantry, there have been 44,000 households who have used a your local pantry. And those households represent 120,000 people um, whose lives have, have benefited from a your local pantry. In this past year alone, um, there has been 270,000 visits to your local pantries. Um, I think some pantry coordinators who are here might think all of those visits were just to their pantry on one afternoon. Um, but that is what has been in the network for this last year. And right now there are 13,000 current members, so 13,000 households who are actively using a your local pantry. Um, thanks to our partnership with the co-op um, last year and this year, we were able to find out the average saving um, of a basket of shopping from a pantry. Um, for those of you who love numbers, there is an appendix at the back of the report that shows you how um, this was calculated. Um, but what we do is we take the average value of a basket and we look at what that might cost for a pantry shop. And the average saving per visit is now £21.33. Which means if someone is a member and they visit um, every week, their potential saving is £1,024 a year. Now, due to those 270,000 visits, that means that this year alone, um, pantry members collectively have saved approximately um, £5,760,000 um, by going to your local pantries. The data is never um, what we want to be the main focus, um, although I, we do love it. Um, it's our hope that the pantry portal provides this information when it's needed and when, it wants, when we want to celebrate it. Um, and as a network, we will continue to make sure that this is available for our pantries and that it does what they need it to do. But we will always come back to the fact that the pantries are actually about members, that it's about people. Um, I think that's a good time to move on to what we've learned about uh, the people of pantries. Um, as Gav mentioned, we've done a few reports now and we know that despite increasing challenges for some pantries, there's many pantries that are thriving. And your first question might be, well, what is a thriving pantry? Um, and that was also our first question. Uh, so Jen and James are going to share what our network told us thriving pantry meant. Thank you, Rachel. One where we are able to get to know the members and support them in a holistic way, which includes the provision of food. The heart of our local community where people come for more than food. Buzzing with the sound of members talking and sitting back down after getting their shopping and continuing the conversation. A community where members get wraparound support to improve their financial situation, but also build resilience. Part of the heartbeat of the community, enable support without having to be referred. Full of life, a place of friendship and hope. One that provides a great range of fresh, chilled and ambient foods and where pantry members find so much more than food with good conversations, help and support. Thank you. Um, these quotes highlight the importance of relationships, of conversation, friendship and community. Community is a word that instinctively and unprompted um, comes up when you talk to pantry members, volunteers and staff. It's clear that thriving pantries are thriving by not going it alone. When conducting interviews and surveys for this report and really any time when you speak to a pantry, it's rare that a response doesn't contain a story about a relationship or a partnership or a reference to the people that are part of the pantry community. Um, pantry volunteers will always point to the green beans and they'll tell you what allotment they came from or whose husband went to pick them up the night before. Um, and the coordinators are always talking about a great partnership that they have with someone who runs the local art class or who runs an advice service. People that they couldn't do the pantry without. One coordinator said, uh, they described the pantry as the heart of the community. Another said, to me, a thriving pantry is plenty of activity and community building partnerships. Um, a third said, we have created a community who cares. Um, we are more than just a place to buy food. 
And finally, one said, while people value the affordable food, it's the community that keep, it keeps people coming back. Thriving pantries are those who aren't doing it alone. The members, the volunteers, their fellow community food projects, um, the partners who run drop-ins at pantries, the funders and the supporters, they work together to create community. Pantries who are thriving are not doing everything and not being everything by themselves. They're working with their members and wider community. Later on, you heard we're gonna hear from Susan from Kingston and to steal something she said in the report, she said, the word on the street is that people can get a lot of help here as an organisation. We cannot fix everything, but there is a lot of help. Another way that the local pantries specifically are working with a larger community is the network itself. While the software was rated as one of the most valuable parts of being part of uh, your local pantry, it was followed by the relationships with other pantries as being one of the most highly valued parts of the network. The wealth of the knowledge of the network is unbeatable. And we've been really fortunate this year to capture some of that knowledge with new case studies, but also for context specific guidance for pantries who are based in specific settings. Um, so like schools, food banks, multi-site pantries, they've shared with us the lessons that they've learned and we can now better support other pantries in those uh, settings and also new pantries who come to us in those settings. Not going it alone and being deeply connected to the community is an undeniable reality of thriving pantries. And in, those, in turn, those pantries are having a much wider impact on their members. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Gav and to Susan. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, one of the um, one of the most pleasing aspects of the pantry network for the past two or three years has been the, the growing range of different kinds of partners that are in the network. Um, there are pantries run by charities, by local authorities, by churches, community centres, independent local organisations. There's a pantry in a library, pantries in schools. It's, it's a really wide diversity. Um, why do so many organisations choose your local pantry rather than trying to go alone? I think we hear various reasons. Um, firstly, the model is deliberately very flexible, which means it can be fitted into local situations, local contexts very naturally. Um, it's not something that's imposed and has to be complied with rigidly. It's, it's deliberately um, deliberately flexible when we work together. Secondly, the logistical and operational systems and support are fantastic. So we're trying to run an organized database. It means you can keep track of membership and meet all the requirements around food and obligations. Um, you've got a huge head start. Thirdly, there's, as Rachel said, there's a wealth of experience in the team. They've navigated countless tricky and unforeseen scenarios over the years, and they're really well placed to ensure that pantries open smoothly and can continue to run smoothly. Um, there's also the, the sort of access to a connection with like-minded people and groups all around the country, um, including the option of regular catch-ups with other coordinators to share ideas and share lessons and learning. Um, and also you're joining a wide movement of really compassionate communities. Um, that, that want to make change happen. And there's a chance to connect with, with other campaigns and activities that are working towards change change happening. Um, so this year, for example, lots of pantry members have been involved in projects like Speaking Truth to Power, so that people on low incomes are really listened to and involved in change, and also in creative work through the, the Let's End Poverty campaign. Um, it would be great to be able to share dozens and dozens of these different pantry stories today, but it would take us a long, long time. Um, so we're very pleased to be joined by one pantry coordinator, uh, Susan from Kingston. So yeah, Susan, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about um, about Kingston Pantry um, and what you think makes it a place that people want to come to every week um, and maybe share with us a bit about the difference it's made in your community. Thank you, Gavin. Um, so I come with to you with the South African accent. So just to add to the accents, and I've um, I've just had a long interview, so I think my English for the day might have run out. So apologies in advance if I make some grammar mistakes. <laughs> um, I think for us at Kingston Pantry, we we always come back to the ethos of your local pantry: dignity, choice, and hope. And believe that if people experience that, um, our members, when they come to the pantry, they will come back. Um, if I think about dignity, um, a lot of it 
Um, for me, start with the space that we have tried to create. So we try to make our pantry really um, pretty and a lovely space to be in. So our members will often say that they feel like they shop at a little farm shop when they come to the pantry. Um, and I think also often families that visit us come from from sometimes chaotic lives where they're really struggling so if we can bring some order so it just through processes to make it easier for them when they come in um so we from the beginning have worked um with time slots um so that people won't queue up for food because um yeah to just restore that dignity so they can just walk in feel like they come to shop they don't have to struggle with their kids waiting in a queue um and then from the moment they walk in, we, we make sure they feel like it's not just a, a handout, that they're here to shop, that we um, treat them with respect. It's, it's amazing to see how the volunteers remember what someone said last week, either they were talking about um, maybe an appointment that they have and they would follow up and people feel like they are seen and, and that someone remember remembers them um and then also we as an organization also run um the food bank which is very important for crisis support but the biggest difference between food bank and pantry should always so one of the biggest differences would be choice um and i know for us who works with surplus food so choice can sometimes be tricky to navigate um but it is sometimes in in the small things um we i i've one of one of my members her husband has asperger's so so he will only eat Benson's um, chutney. So if I find a bottle, I make sure to put a little sticker on, keep a name on it, keep it back in the storeroom so that when she can come in and say, oh, we've got Benson chutney today, or another mom who has an aut autistic child and only eat honey crunch um, um, cereal. And it's just providing someone with that little bit of extra care in a choice that they can have, where often they might not have the choice to choose what is really suitable for their family. Um, we try to, again, our lovely volunteers, what would we do with our volunteers? Um, one of the volunteers came up with the idea that we're going to have a shelf now where we visit different culinary regions and then we'll have um, try to, to source things, say, from India this week so that we can have recipe cards and um, people can experience that and get another choice than just the basic thing. So it's those small little things that makes a difference. Um, in in the choice that we have um, and then obviously we all know that the world can be tough at the moment so we need to be a place of hope and it's amazing that that today is also called places of hope and as you can see in our pantry up on our wall we have the words hope um, last year when we did our impact event um, hope was one was our year theme as well as an organization and um, I made the deco and afterwards I, I brought it to the pantry and often um, some of our members will point to it and say but there's hope um, I think like like Rachel have said we we always say we cannot fix everything we cannot solve all the problems but for someone to be to know that they're not standing alone. Someone is standing with them and makes such a difference when they're going through through difficult difficult times. Um, we are extremely fortunate that that our pen pantry is not standing on its own. Um, we part of City Changer Project, so um, we run Kingston Food Bank, the pantry, Grow Baby, advocacy services, um, employment works, which really enables us to offer um, us to offer that wraparound um, support. And through all of this, we always say we um, we divide everything into um, step in or stand with or strengthening our our, our um, members. Where food bank will typically be a step in. Um, project because it's stepping into a crisis the pantry is a place of standing with someone and strengthening someone through the wraparound support um, that we offer i think everyone who runs a pantry will agree our heart will always be to to get our members to a better financial position um, so that they might be able to move on um, it will differ some will will have to say for a longer time some will be for a short time we recently um or well, actually i was recently reminded right at the beginning when our pantry started um, we had a mum who came to the pantry because she went on to maternity leave it was just when um, the cost of living crisis were really hitting hard and they were really struggling because of the massive impact on income um, at the time so she stayed with the pantry through uh, maternity leave and really helped them 
um, do not go into crisis because that is one of the biggest things that pantries will do. Um, and just recently, I saw her again, and I saw her where we were doing a, um, a, a day at Waitrose where we just um, speak to people about the food bank and the pantry and people donate, and she was donating to the pantry. So she came from being a pantry member to someone who is now regularly donating, bringing things in, giving back. Um, so it's always good to look at those stories back. Um, then we, we're also fortunate to have a coffee shop outside of the pantry, which is lovely, so people can sit there and it becomes a lovely environment. Um, often uh, um, we see people who become members and before long you almost think, did you know one another beforehand? And they're like, no, we didn't, because they become such good friends at Pantry. Now you've got these two older ladies, every week they come way before they slot early so that they can sit in the coffee shop, have their tea, talk about the world and everything, and then they um, come do their shopping. But they go further than that. They shop on each other's behalf if the one is ill. They check in. They come and tell me if they have any concerns about someone who might be ill. So there's that's the sense of a community that's that's being built between people who haven't known one another before. Um, so we, we, everyone who knows me have heard the story. Uh, one of our beautiful stories is our driver story. So our driver first came to us when his wife left and he was left with two um, very young children and he couldn't continue his work as a chef. So he needed to use food bank, he needed to use Grow Baby. Um, and one day uh, my boss asked him, um, what else can, what else do you need? And he said, I just, I need a job. I need something to do, but it needs to be suitable while I also have to take care of younger children. So um, he said, can you drive? He said, yes, I can drive. And he started driving first just for the food bank. And now today, um, fast forward a few years, he's the driver for um, the pantry as well. And I think when Felix Project sees him coming, they sort of take turns whose turn it is today to speak to Russell because he does not leave without a full van. <laughs> <laughs> because he's been on the other side. He's just so passionate. He talks about my pantry. Whose is that? Could we have more? He always makes sure to get the best and bring it back. And on his way back, he's already thinking, um, should I quickly drop this off at Grow Baby? Um, but he, he often, when he tells his story, and there's, there's a lot more to this, or a really heartbreaking story. But when he tells it, he says, I came for food, but I found not just food. I found... Uh, a, um, I found a job, I found food, I found a church, I found a family. So like we all say, it's it's not um, just about the food. The food is just the, the way we open the door. When people walk into the door, it's about way more than the food. Um, I love being in the pantry and to listen how people are chatting, how they are sharing recipes, how they offer each other help, how they become friends beyond pantry, how they donate diamonds um, if they don't are going to use everything this week so that another member who's got a I'm out of everything week can use um, use um, that diamond, how they are part of our forum and feels that sense of belonging community and that they are part of something um, bigger, how they, the, our 80 year old member who bakes us, the volunteers, a banana cake from the bananas from last week's in his air fryer and he brings it in next week for us to taste. Um, it is amazing to be part of that and, and just experience that, that, um, that community. One of our members was a pensioner who joined the pantry um, because both two of her children returned home. So they were really like going through a difficult time. And she was able, she said, the pantry helped her to put her daughter through college. Her daughter is now a teacher. Recently, the daughter collected loads of books. So they're going to start, she and her mom, a little book swap in the, in the corner of the pantry. Why only do food if we can have a little library as well? So just giving back again. Um, Yes, so I think um, dignity, choice, and hope, and standing with someone, even if you can't fix anything that they know they're not alone, they learn they're part of a community. Thank you very much. That's, that's been so lovely to hear. Thank you very much for, for joining us and for, for sharing all of that. Um, we're going to we're going to very briefly 
Um, Joshua, a few of the comments we've had from members, there are thousands and thousands of members all over the country. Um, it's impossible to, to sort of show everything, obviously, at an event like this, but we'll give a, a little snapshot and then we'll pass straight on from there to Ed Powell from the co-op, um, who's going to talk about their, their observations from the three years of partnership with your local pantry. It helps us money-wise. We're saving maybe £20 a week, and that means we have a bit more money for other costs and also to spend with my daughter, like days out together and buying clothes and making her life better. The social side has been fantastic. Everybody that comes in is really lovely and everyone I volunteer with as well. There's nobody that isn't lovely. For me, on a social level, it's brilliant getting out of the house more. When society is so stratified and disconnected, it's nice to meet people and be connected. When it was cold, it was nice to come and warm up. And for some people, it's the only people they will see each week. Often there's a vertex of mental health issues and poverty. This is good for mental health and you're warming up and getting some food. Thanks, James and Jen. I'm going to pass on to Ed. Thank you, Gav. Um, this is so powerful today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, what I've really loved is seeing the way that there's recognition of individuals, but all the solutions come from communities. So I want to thank by thank you, uh, thank all the pantries for all the hard work that you are doing. It's really important for Co-op to be part of this. We're a, we're a member organisation formed in 1844, actually out of the need to look at food justice. And actually one of the solutions to that was uh, people coming together, helping to take ownership and control in their own community. Um, so that they put their resources together and that's how the Co-op was created. Uh, well, certainly consumer Co-ops in Rochdale uh, in 1844. And actually what we're doing, partnering with Church Action uh, and putting the resources in to help support uh, some of the, the, the support services that individual pantries get, but also some practical things, whether that's expertise in helping something like this report to find out how much saving there is per basket, or, um, and I've seen uh, Emma from InKind Direct on here, helping to work with people like Kimberly Clark uh, to provide the toilet rolls and products um, to pantries as well there's a number of different ways we can work but the reason we do it is because the same values that we were formed with in 1844 still exist today and our principles uh, help us to show concern for community so our five million members have given that that money and other resource to be able to support your local pantry and this is really the outworking of it seeing this in action and um, I know that Helen uh, from Central Rochdale is on here and she kindly invited me to the Pantry Soft launch on Saturday. And it was uh, so, so powerful to see that in action. A, a community of people um, helping one another uh, in, in Central Rochdale. And I think that that's going to go from strength to strength. I also look forward to next week of being up for the soft launch in, in Halford as well. So seeing countries grow and that country's uh, coming out of this partnership, but also the work we do with Bernardo's. So in particular, supporting young people. So there are many ways in which we can work together, but we hold a shared values, uh, which help us both to grow. Um, but really it's the work on the ground and how you bring people together in, uh, in community using food um, to help uh, work through life together. So I just wanted to say thank you to you for all the hard work you do. That's brilliant, thank you so much, Ed. Um, back to me for a little bit. Um, one of the other things, um, one of the, a really great quote that came out of this report was, um, a coordinator told us that the best ideas come from members. The biggest thing we've learned about running a pantry is the importance of making sure members are involved in all areas of what we do. Member engagement looks different at each pantry and members' confidence to be active in the pantry is also something that varies. You'll hear that phrase a lot from your local pantry that um, 
that every pantry is different and we say it a lot because it's true. Um, each pantry in this network is following a, a core basic model, but ultimately each pantry is for its members first and foremost, and therefore everyone is doing things in their own way. Um, when it comes to member engagement, some pantries are proactive at encouraging member volunteers, um, encouraging members to be part of steering groups or advisory groups, and others take the approach of regular surveys, suggestion boxes, and actively looking for feedback from members. The shared learning across the network of how to do that member engagement um, has involved sharing surveys and consultations, taking work that other people are doing in their pantries and adapting it, um, and that kind of wealth of knowledge is something that comes up time and time again. But there's also been really constructive conversations. Um, I've been fortunate to attend some of the, the Edinburgh regional meetings where the groups of pantries in Edinburgh come together and talk. And they're able to say our pantries are communities, even within this one space, this one city. Um, they're all at a different stage of that member engagement journey. Some of them are really thriving with member volunteers. Um, and others are just not there yet. Um, and that's okay because they're they're kind of learning together. Um, member engagement can also be about getting to know what members' needs are and providing that access, which is often done through conversations and relationships rather than formal settings and surveys and groups. Um, in our survey, um, this I love a, a graph, um, in our survey, Welcome and Hospitality um, was available at almost every pantry who responded to the survey that um, when you go to a pantry, there is immediately some form of hospitality available. Um, and for others, there is a way to access that. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, being connected to a wider community means that pantries, if they can offer an activity or support themselves, they know who in the community can, they know who's offering those services, who's running those activities, and they can make introductions or sometimes they can even make appointments and referrals for their members. But there's also a real willingness from pantries to try new things and to learn from what other pantries are offering. Um, the not reinventing the wheel is another phrase that you'll often hear in the network. Because when members at one pantry want to try something new or want help with something, there's a really high chance that members at another pantry have asked for that before and someone else has, has done the work to make that happen. Um, well, I didn't plan on uh, plan this with Susan when she talked about farmhouse um, vibes. That was in my notes as well. And the pantry space um, is actually a vital part of member engagement. For those pantries who are newer, they will have seen a really in-depth pantry site checklist. Um, or you may have been exposed to a presentation of photos of really pretty looking pantries. Um, farm shop vibes is something that comes up a lot. But there's something about attention to detail. Um, or some just really great signage, because it all says that that space has been created intentionally. Something that is one of the uh, a common bit of feedback from members on their first visit talks about the feel of the space of the pantry. And by putting care and attention into the space, it often reflects the care and attention that is shown to members. When it comes to thriving pantries, we can see that by creating a, welcome, a welcoming and positive environment, and by pantries focusing on building community, this leads to good relationships with members and with volunteers. And through this, pantries become places where members can speak up and can be heard. Over time, this then extends beyond the pantry and into that into the wider community. And um, Gav mentioned earlier that earlier this year, um, some pantries joined Church Action and Poverty's Speak Interest to Power program and took part in training to promote bringing groups of members together to take action and create change in their community. Um, opportunities for pantry members to take action in their community is fostered through pantries being a place where member voices are heard and they can experience that. Community-led change becomes tangible because when people are dealing with difficult social issues, there's an inherent goodness in people coming together, doing life together, sharing food, skills, ideas, and company. Um, I'd like to hand back to Gab. Um, we're going to open up now to, um, to any questions. Um, realize we've been sort of talking talking to you for 40 minutes now, and it might have raised some issues you want to check or ask about or um, or just clarify. So has anybody got anything they'd like to ask? Feel free to use the raise hand symbol or if nobody else is talking, go for it, take your chance. Um, a 
or if not, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm just checking, has anything come up in the chat box while we've been in here as well? Let me just check. Or observations, if it's not a question, by all means. Um, Okay, doc. Um, well, in that case, thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, thank you to Susan and Ed um, for for contributing as well, and thank you to everybody again who um, who contributed to the report while it was um, being planned and, and gathered and written and all sorts. Um, I hope everybody's gained um, sort of a bit more understanding into some of the fantastic work that goes on across all 121 pantries and beyond and in the, in the neighborhoods surrounding them as well um to make those to make all those places real places of hope um we're not naive about the challenges that a lot of communities face the report um the, the report is on our website now and it'll be emailed um around after this meeting and you'll see that we do we do address the the challenges and the shifting playing fields um that many of us in many of your communities are facing whether that's funding political context and so forth but we do know, and we've seen again and again this year, that change happens best when people do come together and work as a community to try to make that change happen. Um, and I hope we've we've shown you, um, if you weren't already aware, that pantries are a, a wonderful demonstration of that. Um, we've got some new openings this month and next. The Salvation Army have just opened their first pantry in Welling. Uh, Bernardo's are involved in a new one up in Ayrshire. Uh, there's one close to opening in a primary school in Salford to mention just, just three. So pantries do work for a huge diverse range of organizations. Um, like I say, if you've got immediate questions about opening your first pantry, if this has piqued your interest and you want to know more, then by all means, um, stay on this call and we can, we can exchange details um, and set up a proper one-to-one -one meeting. Um, and we've also got a, a webinar on October the 9th at noon um, which will look at sort of a bit more detail about what a pantry is, how it works, um, and why it might work for for different communities. Um, so yeah, by all means, stay on the call if you if you're ready to go and want to know more. Um, but otherwise, thank you all very much for joining, and we'll uh, we'll end things there. <laughs>